Hey, what's going on guys? It's been a little bit since I've done a video like this. Most of my content lately I know has just been kind of copy paste stream uploads, but this is pretty important so I felt like it was worth putting a video out. We got the EverQuest producers letter from 2023. This is a pretty big letter so we're just going to start at the top here. Um, let's see here, it says they're talking about as we're heading into April, there are still many exciting things on the horizon that we can't wait to reveal. Expect us to drop a hint or two along the way. We usually can't completely contain our excitement before, though, keeping with our 2023 roadmap. Let's rattle off some things that we've already accomplished. Uh, okay, so we're just going to get down here. So, so far, they've completed Night of Shadows Tier 1, Tier 2, Tier 3, and some of the EverQuest Anniversary content. And we're just going to start here, and now I get to share with you what's happening in the coming weeks and months. First, the new UI engine is almost here. In the beginning, it's going to launch with the UI, with the engine running with a few windows already ported. This will allow us to make sure the base engine works and is hooked up with everything it should be. Once that is stable, we'll continue porting the remaining windows until every part of the original engine has been ported. That porting process is expected to take a while. And second, a second Tempest Festival will receive new content. June will see the return of Pride Month familiars with a new set of friends. So here we have April, new UI engine initial launch with full engine launch with some windows ported to the new engine, which I think that was technically today. Uh, May we have new content for Tempest Festival and new evolving rule set progression server Oakwind. June, new Pride Month familiars and throughout the year, porting more windows to the new UI engine and zone performance improvements. This performance improvements thing has me kind of curious. Cool to see a little teaser here. And this is the big bit of news here. And now for what many of you have been waiting for, our brand new progression server named Oakwind will launch in May as an evolving rule set progression server. So there's quite a bit to break down here. So we're just gonna go step by step. Some of this I might be interpreting incorrectly. If that's the case, then please feel free to let me know. I'm gonna tell you what I think about it and we'll go from there. So what does this mean you ask? As mentioned in passing before, this will be a truly experimental year. It starts out at launch with something we call legacy characters and encounter locking. Then at expansion unlock, an additional bonus would be added to the server. The details of these rules under the develop are under development and may change before release. So none of this is set in stone. I think they're doing this for feedback. Less legacy characters allow your characters on the same account server on the server to receive a semi-permanent experience bonus. When players reach a max level for the current era with a character, their account receives an experience bonus for all characters on that server. Example, when, play, when a player has one max level character, their account receives a 10% experience buff. When a player has two max level characters, the buff stacks, now getting 20% experience, and this caps all the way up at 100. When the server's level cap increases, players will lose the buff until they get one of their characters to max level again, and then it starts again at 10%. I think this is... This is all right. This is a pretty cool idea, personally, because as someone who's kind of an altaholic from the get-go, it's a cool idea. I would love for my characters to level faster in general, but I kind of just wish it would be a faster experience boost from the start without having to level character to max. Because what this is telling me is to level 10 characters, and then my 11th character is going to be the raid character. That's what it's telling me. Additionally, the server will be our first attempt at encounter locking. In short, once an NPC is engaged, it will be locked to that character, group, or raid. Characters not part of the lock cannot contribute damage. Spells from outside characters will not land on the NPC. If an actively locked NPC loses aggro for a short period of time, the NPC will go home, reset, and unlock. Not a fan. I am really, really not a fan. I know what their good intentions are here, but what this is telling me 
is that there's going to be a lot of griefing. There's going to be people who show up really high level eventually once stuff starts to become old content. There's going to be people who show up and for the sake of griefing someone that they don't like, they're going to grab aggro on an NPC and go AFK. That's what that's telling me. It's going to be used for more griefing than good. I do not like that. But maybe that's something that I'm not quite understanding. Maybe there's a time limit on it, maybe there's some other different aspect of it, but I do not like that with the first impression. Once I get more information, I'd be willing to change my opinion. And now on to the evolving part. For each expansion unlock, we're planning on adding the following benefits to the server. This is important here. Each benefit will add to the existing instead of replacing the benefits active. Unless it's a higher value of an existing benefit. For example, using the list below, the Scars of Alias unlocks legacy characters and counterlocking and a 125% modifier to the loot rate will already be unlocked and with the additional unlock a 25% modifier to the normal factions will be added. So, you'll get 125% loot in Runes, uh, Runes of Kunark. Then Scars of Alias, you're going to have both of these active. Then Shadows of Luckland, you're going to have all three of those active. Then Planes of Power, etc. It's just going to stack and stack and stack and stack. And then the higher percentage values are going to eventually overwrite the smaller. This is good. This is really good. This is really, really, really good, in my opinion. Now, what they should do, give us all of these and slap it on a server right now. Seriously, just give us all of those percent boosts and slap it on a legacy server. Fury on a V preferred. Because all of these boosts are active, are percentage boost in my opinion that should already be active everything should be faster i don't want to have to go through four years of expansions to experience this type of everquest again this is just my opinion but i think this all right here except for the encounter locking needs to happen that should just automatically be they should roll that all into a nice big bundle and drop it on Fairy on a V. And here's the rule, here's the standard unlock. It's a standard unlock schedule as many other progression servers. This is nothing new. It's 8 to 12 weeks with the early expansions unlocking faster. So there's Classic, 8 weeks later Kunark, 8 weeks later Valius, 8 weeks later Luckland, and so on and so forth. The 12 weeks later, Lost Dungeons of Norath stuff, I still think is ridiculous. I think that should be four weeks at the best. At the absolute best. This whole four weeks later Gates of Discord thing, meh. They need to drop Gates of Discord, Lost Dungeons of Norath, and Legacy Yakisha all at the same time. At this point, the schedule becomes consistent and enjoy expansions for 12 weeks when a new level cap is unlocked and 8 weeks in expansions where the level cap stays the same. This is also something I think is alright. It's a true box server starting. When Omens drops, it's relaxed true box, so it's 3 counts per character. When Buried Sea unlocks, true box is entirely removed. That's fine. Nothing against this, I think that's alright. This is amazing. All of these boosts, awesome ideas. Uh, locking characters? No. There have been very, very few things that EverQuest has introduced recently that has just made me flat out say no, but this is one of them. Like I said, if they give us new information and it turns out to be completely opposite to what I'm expecting and there's going to be anti-griefing stuff in involved with it, cool. I'll readjust my opinion. This all is amazing. 
I know I'm a small content creator, but if Dark Paw, Daybreak, whatever you want to call them, if they hear this, please give us a server with all of this active on it right now. Theory on a V would be absolutely amazing with some of these percent boosts. Even if you don't give us all of them, give us the experience modifier in addition to everything. I mean, 200% experience modifier from base game? Give us that. Give us the rare spawn modifier. Give us the luck modifier. Give us the mercenary Aeon modifier. Anywho's, that's all the important stuff here. They're hiring, of course, but those are my opinions, guys. Please feel free to, of course, leave me comments, suggestions, what you think. What you think is good, what you disagree with, what you think is bad, what your opinion is to any of this, because they need feedback. I can guarantee that's why they dropped it so early. Give them feedback. If you don't like it, voice it. If you love it, voice it. If you're okay with it, but you think there should be some changes, please say something. Because I can promise you that if enough people say one thing or the other, something's going to change. So that's it, guys. Thanks for watching, and I will see you all in the next one.